guys, and it's time for part one and two of our Jimmy B. John series. So, as I told you, I was going to post my doll video on March 28th, but yesterday it was so, so, so late that I didn't have time to make it. But I promise, promise, promise that I'll make it today. I pinky promise. Pinky, pinky, pinky. A pinky and promises. Everyone put their pinkies out that's watching this video. All right. So, as I told you, um, today I will have another one of my top five Junie B. Jones books. And then that means we only have three more left to read. So, are you guys excited to see it? We are done with Ginny B. Jones' Cheater Pants, so lock that box. And if you want to hear that book again, and if you don't have it, then you could just pull up my videos to watch it, okay? Alright, so let's find out, um, oh my gosh, this carpet. I'm gonna move you guys. Ah. There we go, we're moving. Okay, so this, the reason why I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt today, don't tell my dad that I told you this, but my dad convinced me to wear this long sleeve shirt today. I can't believe that. All right, so it has something to do related to do with Easter because Easter is coming up, as you all know. And Jimmy B. Jones' Easter book is one of my favorite books. This is the book. It's called Jimmy B. Jones' Dumb Bunny. So, um, I don't know what she's saying about a dumb bunny, but we're going to find out in this book. And this book is kind of long. It has 10 chapters, at least one more chapter than yesterday, and 113 pages. Okay? You guys think you could handle that? There's, we just need to make barely more any videos, not even one. We could make chapter 9 and 10 on the same video. It's just that um, the chapters are a little bit longer than yesterday's book. But that's okay, we want them to be longer because guess why? Because we get to find out more problems and mysteries. So let's read the clue to help us at least what this dumb bunny thing means. It's an Easter egg hunt extravaganza. Lucille is having an Easter egg hunt at her Richie mansion. Only here's the problem. How did Ginny B. Jones get stuck wearing a dumb bunny suit? And how can she fit eggs when she's tripping over her big rabbit feet? Will Ginny B. end up with egg on her face? Or will the day deliver some unexpected surprises? Ooh, so it looks like, see in the picture here? Junie B looks like she was not happy, and it looks like she's wearing a bunny costume. I wonder what that's for. And she is having a fantastic um, Easter egg extravaganza at her friend Lucille's house. So we're going to find out what is going to happen here, because I don't know what's going to happen with this dumb bunny stuff. But let's find out. All right, so. Junie B. Jones, Dumb Bunny, Book 27, by Barbara Park, illustrated by Denise Brunkus. Chapter 1, Dumb Bunnies and Clucks. Monday, Dear First Grade Journal, Dumb Bunny, Dumb Bunny, Dumb Bunny. I am not allowed to say dumb bunny on account of my teacher heard me call May that name on the playground. And he said for me to knock it off. Only here is something I just thought of. Even if I can't say dumb bunny out loud, I can still think it inside my head. Because heads are silent, which is what I like about heads. I am going to try it out right now. I put down my pencil and looked at May. Then I squinted my eyes real teensy, and I 
thought that I introduced myself. Dumb bunny, dumb bunny, dumb bunny, dumb bunny. May look suspicious at me. What are you doing, Julie Jones? Why are you squinting like that, she asked. Stop it right now. Stop that squinting. I paused my squint. I'm not just squinting at you, May. I'm also thinking a name about you inside my head, but you don't even know what name I'm thinking. Because heads are silent, which is what I like about heads, I said. May frowned. I started my squint again. Dumb bunny, dumb bunny, dumb bunny, dumb bunny, dumb bunny, I thought. After I finished, I brushed my hands together very suspicious. There! That ought to hold me for a while, I said. May kept on frowning. Then, blam! She exploded out of her chair, and she zoomed to the front of the room. Mr. Scary, Mr. Scary, Junie B called me that name again. I know she did, only she thought it inside her head, and then is just plain sneaky. Mr. Scary was writing at his desk. He closed his eyes and did a big breath. May, what are our three new rules about tattling? He asked. You and I came up with three new rules to control your tattling, remember? Can you tell me what they are, please? May stood there a real long time. She did not like the three new rules, I believe. Finally, she started to say them. Rule number one. Count to 20 before I tattle, she grumped. Mr. Scary nodded. Yes, May, excellent. That's the first rule. Go on. Rule number two, said May. If I still feel like tattling, count to 20 again. Mr. Scary did a thumbs up. Yes, good. And rule number three, May. Sucked in her cheeks. Rule number three. If I still feel like tattling after that, go home, eat dinner, go to bed, wake up, eat breakfast, come back to school, raise my hand to tattle, then put my hand over my mouth and please be quiet, she said. Mr. Scary clapped his happy hands. Perfect, you've got it. Those are exactly the rules we talked about, aren't they? He said. I'm very proud of you for remembering them. He stood up and walked her back to her chair. You have a great memory for rules, May, he said, but the next step is to actually follow the rules, okay? And I don't believe you counted to 20 this time. Did you? I leaned over and tapped on him. I can vouch for that, I said. There was definitely no counting. Mr. Scary frowned at me. I'll deal with you in a minute, Miss Jones, he said. You and I are going to review the rules on name calling. I did a goal, but I didn't even call her a name, Mr. Scary. All I did was think a name in my head, I said. May flashed her angry eyes. No, you did not just think it, Junie Jones. You told me you were thinking it. And that is exactly like saying it almost, she said. She went on. Plus, you didn't even think it quietly. You thought it so loud that I could hear it in your brain. May looked up at Mr. Scary. My ears were tested last year in kindergarten, she said. The nurse and I could hear as good as a North American barn owl. Mr. Scary stared at her a real long time. No, May. No, I'm sorry, he said, finally. But the nurse did not tell you that. You do not hear as well as a North American barn owl. May squirmed in her chair a little bit. Squirming is what happens after fibbing. At least that has
has always been my expression. After a minute, May put her head on her desk, and she covered up with her sweater. Mr. Scary bent down next to me. And as for you, Miss Jones, this is the absolute last time that I ever want to talk to you about name calling, he said. I don't want you to say dumb bunny, or think dumb bunny, or sing dumb bunny, or hum dumb bunny, or write dumb bunny. Do you understand? I tapped my fingers on my desk. But then, what am I supposed to do when May is mean to me? I asked him. I have to call her something, or else she won't even know I'm mad. I thought for a second. Then I clapped my hands together. Hey, I know. Maybe I can just think the dumb part in my head. Bunny, I said. Will just play bunny be okay with you? May popped up from under her sweater. No, 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 she grouched. Just plain bunny isn't nice either. My friend named Sheldon stood up. Bunny isn't nice? How come bunny isn't nice? He asked. I have an aunt named Bunny, and she's very, very nice. Sheldon looked at Mr. Scary. My Aunt Bunny is married to my Uncle Vern, he said. Aunt Bunny has a lot of... Mr. Scary quick held up his hand. Yes, Sheldon, we know. You've told us many interesting things about your Aunt Bunny, but right now we don't need to hear any more about your Aunt Bunnies. School tacos! said Sheldon. Please sit down, said Mr. Scary across the room. Lucille sprang right up. Well, I love, love, love bunnies, she said. And so this subject is perfect timing for me because I'm having a big party at my giant house on Saturday and all of you are invited to come. She bounced up and down real excited. And guess what else? A very famous bunny is going to be there to meet you. Guess who it is, everyone? Guess the bunny. Guess the bunny, she said. Room one thought real hard. Then all of us started to guess at once. Bugs Bunny? Buster Bunny? The Bonic Bunny? Thumper? We guessed. Lucille rolled her eyes. No, 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 she said. My bunny is way more famous than those dumb cartoon guys. We guessed some more. The Tricks Rabbit? The Velveteen Rabbit? Peter Rabbit, we asked. Lucille stamped her foot. No, she said again. What's wrong with you people? It's the Easter Bunny. Haven't you ever heard of the Easter Bunny? She reached into her desk and pulled out some fancy envelopes. Then she waved them around real angry. Do you see these invitations? Huh? Do you? She asked. These are invitations to an Easter egg hunt at my rich, expensive house. And I was going to pass them out at lunch. But if you dumb clucks never even heard of the Easter Bunny, just never mind the whole thing. After that, she did a huffy. And she flounced back in her chair. Mr. Scary hurried over there. Then he quick got her up, and he took her by the hand, and he walked her into the hall. They were gone a real long time. When they finally came back, Lucille said she is sorry for calling us dumb clucks. That is some kind of insult, apparently. Then she took the envelopes out of her desk again. And she gave everyone an invitation. And so, yippee, yippee, hooray, hooray. Room one is going to a party.
Okay, you have been knocking on the door for the past 10 minutes. Put it here in the first place? Finally! It was so annoying. Next time if you have to tell me something like that, then you don't just put it in here. So sorry about that, guys. Let's pretend that that didn't even happen. Alright. So, like, snap. That didn't happen. Chapter 2. Clothes and Nubs. Lucille was still mad at lunch. I just don't get it, she grouched. How could anyone forget the Easter Bunny? The Easter Bunny brings candy right to your door. Liney did a frown at her. He doesn't bring candy to my door, Lucille, he said. The Easter Bunny is a different religion than me. I'm Jewish. Shirley nodded. I'm Jewish too, Lucille, she said. I've never even been to an Easter egg hunt. Did you just knock on the door again? I need to stop me now. You, you could have told me that before. It's another one. Okay, that's the last time that I'm going to open the door. So sorry about this, guys. Before. Why do you wear it to something like that anyway? Lucille stood up and fluffed herself. Well, since the Easter Bunny and I are the same religion, I'm going to wear a fancy Easter dress, Shirley, she said. Shirley thought for a minute. Then she nodded. Hmm. Then I guess I will wear a fancy Jewish dress, she said. Liney's eyes lighted up. Really, Shirley? You mean we have our own clothing line? He asked. He smiled. Then I think... I will wear some fancy Jewish pants, he said. My friend named Herbert tapped on his chin. Let's see, since I'm oppressed by train. I guess I should wear oppressed Bertrand pants, he said. He turned and looked at me. Pressed burr train means we iron out our wrinkles, I think, he said. Just then, Sheldon slapped the table with his hand. Hey, I know. I will wear a fancy turban. A fancy turban is religious clothes, right? He asked. I love fancy turbans. Mr. Scary was listening to us while he ate. He quick put down his sandwich. Boys and girls, you're getting way off track here, he said. Lucille's Easter egg hunt is not a religious party. Really? I've spoken to her mother about this. It's more of a spring picnic, but then egg hunt activity? Am I right, Lucille? Yes, she said. My mother said the Easter Bunny isn't even working that day. He's just going to hop around the party and smile and have his picture taken with people. I thought about that for a second. I don't think bunnies should smile, I said. Bunnies have yellow teeth, like clown teeth. Except bunny teeth are way pointer. Sheldon nodded. My Aunt Bunny has a pointy tooth, he said. She can stab a pickle with it, and the pickle just stays there. All of us stared at him. Sheldon 
has the interest family I ever heard of. Lucille did a big breath. Well, I don't care about Pointy Bunny. Teeth, she said. Bunnies have cute floppy ears and puffy fluffy tails and itchy twitchy little noses. I kept on picturing their teeth. Bunny teeth can nibble your head into a nub, I said. No, they cannot, Junie B. Jones, she said back. Oh, yes, they can, Lucille, whatever your last name is, I said. I saw it on APRA. Mr. Scary glared at me. I ducked down in my seat and I quinted my voice. Oprah has a lot of new information, I said very soft. Mr. Scary glared again. I started to squirm. Teachers can spot a fib a mile away. At recess, Lucille told us more about the party. She said that there was going to be lots of delicious food to eat. Plus, also there was going to be an exciting prize for the Easter egg winner. And wait till you hear this. She said my daddy is going to hide a real pretend golden egg. And whoever finds the golden egg will win the grand prize of the day. And that is a fabulous play date with me, Lucille. She twirled around and hugged herself. And it's not just any old fabulous play date with me either, she said. The winner is going to get to go swimming with me in my heated indoor swimming pool that we just had and closed. She did a little shiver and rubbed her arms. Isn't that exciting, everyone, she asked. Doesn't that give you the tinkles? She looked around. Well, doesn't it? Huh? Doesn't it make you tickle all over? She asked. All of the children looked curious at each other. Herbert rocked back and forth on his feet a minute. Um, I think you mean the tingles, he said at last. Joe's nodded. See, Lucille, you definitely mean the tingles, he said. Lucille squinted at those two. Tingles? Tinkles. Whatever. The point is a play date with me gives you goosebumps on your arms, she said. Just look at your arms, people. Don't you see them? Don't you see the goosebumps? All of us looked at our arms. None of us saw the goosebumps. We waited and waited, real patient. And then finally, goosebumps, shouted Sheldon. I see goosebumps, Lucille. He ran to her and pointed. Look, Lucille, see them? See my goosebumps, he asked. Lucille's face beamed very happy. Ooh, Sheldon, those are the goosebumpiest goosebumps I ever saw. Thank you, Shalice. Thank you for those goosebumps, she said. After that, she gave him a big hug. And she waved her fingers at us. Well, ta-da, everyone, she said. It's time for me to go look at myself in the cafeteria window. Then she shook her shiny hair and she skipped away. Sheldon kept on standing there. He was shocked from the hug, I think. Then all of a sudden, his whole face lighted up, and he began to shout, Lucille, wait up, I'll look at myself in the cafeteria window too, he shouted. He took off skipping after her. I smiled to see that. I think Sheldon has a crunch on Lucille. I said to my best friend, Herbert, Herb looked funny at me. You mean crush, Jimmy B. He has a crush on Lucille, he said. I started to laugh. Don't 
be ridiculous, Herbert. It's definitely crunch, I said. I am an excellent at expressions. Herb looked funny at me again. I don't not know why. After a minute, Sheldon and Lucille skipped past us. They were smiling and giggling and chasing each other. Sheldon was calling to her. Come back here, you springy little lamb, he called. I slapped my knee. Springy little lamb, ha, he called her a springy little lamb. That is a hoot, I said. May heard me talking. It's not funny, Junie Jones. Can you see what he's doing, she said. Sheldon is trying to get in good with Lucille, so she'll tell him where the golden egg is hidden. He's just trying to win the play date to swim in her pool. She followed him with her eyes. He's not going to get away with it, though, she said. After that, she cupped her hands around her mouth, and she shouted after him. You can just forget about it, Sheldon Potts. I'm going to be the one who finds the golden egg, not you. I've got eyes like a red-tailed hawk. I looked at her very curious. May has a lot of bird parts, I believe. Also, she is cuckoo, and that is not name-calling. That is just the truth. All right, so that is the end of chapter two and chapter four. I mean, chapter one and two. Oh my gosh, I got totally messed up there. Sorry, not chapter two and four. Got a little messed up there. So let's talk about the book first. So remember how at first, um, Lucille told everyone that she was going to have an epic Easter party um, at her house. And then they got a little bit carried away with all the talking and stuff. And Lucille said that her dad is going to hide a golden egg. And then whoever finds it gets to go swim in her pool with her. So um, predict who you think is going to win the Easter egg hunt. And predict... Um, who do you think is going to lose the Easter egg hunt? But we're not at that part yet. So after dinner, I'm going to make my doll video. And sorry if, like, yesterday with when I was reading Ginny B. Jones' Cheater Pants, I had, like, a lot of expression in me and, like, good stuff to say the words. But today wasn't really that good. I'm really sorry if I um, didn't have a lot of expression today. Bye. I hope you enjoyed chapter one and two, and I will see you after dinner for chapter three, everybody. So, um, I'll see you, um, for my doll video and for chapter three and four. Take a vote in the comments below. Bye-bye.